Hey, I'm Will Levis. He's Eric Laville. You're tuned into Levis and Claville, where we give it to you straight the way it is, from a black male's perspective, because it's like that, and that's the way it is. <laughs> so let's get right to this show, man. And this is one of our favorite shows, both of us being fathers. Yeah. Um, today's show, we're talking about fatherhood and raising sons successfully. I've been blessed to be able to raise two sons and also a daughter. Uh, Claville is a father of uh, two sons. And uh, we know that raising black males in this kind of climate in this country uh, has always been a challenge, and, and particularly as we have so much going on in our society in terms of injustices, but in terms of the internet, in terms of different types of uh, generational differences coming from when our fathers raised us to, to as Gen Xers, to us having to raise you know, millennials and generation Z and X and Y. I mean, there's a lot of um, blessings and also challenges that come along with it. And, um, you know, I'm thankful I was able to, to raise two boys to get them into college. And Coville is on the front end of that. I want to celebrate you, man, and the family, you and the wife, successfully uh, raising a, a college-bound young man who graduated with, with uh, superb honors. Man. So congratulations to you. Absolutely. Well, look, to God be the glory for it, because just, yeah, as you, know, you know, when people say congratulations to the parents for their kids graduating, when I was a kid, I used to say, well, what are they talking about? But as a parent, <laughs> now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it's, Absolutely. A, it's more than a notion. It's more than a notion yeah. You know, it's constantly guiding, you know, the ship, right? It's kind of like taking a Taking that ship that's, that's that's in the back and making sure that stays on the path right. that you're on. Now, of course, you got to be on the right path, you know, as 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 the main ship. But just as you said, Will, I mean, for me, being a father is one of the greatest uh, titles that I hold and I cherish dearly. And one thing about being a father, you know, you know this, you'll always have it. You'll always be a father. Right. You know, and right. after being a father, you'll be a grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm there. Yes, indeed. Okay. There. Congratulations. Yes. And if the Lord will, you'll be a great grandfather. You That's know, right. so, you know, these are all, you know, titles and responsibilities that we both hold dear and near to our heart. You and I, we talk a lot, you know, about, you know, raising our sons. And I'm fortunate enough because I have had the benefit of learning from you. And the stories that and experiences you share with me, I ain't sure there's none. You know, I'm also blessed because I have the example of my father, who you know people will call us. I'm I'm in the middle of seven, right? Mm. It was three boys and four girls. Wow! And my brother and I were 15 months apart, so we were like our father's shadow. You know, our older brother was in the first set of kids, and then we were in the last set of kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I don't know what my parents are thinking, but uh, but for the most part, you know, we were, we constantly followed him. And at that point of his life, he was settled, you know, as, as a family, we were settled. He was uh, uh, full of ideas. Uh, we owned a small business and so forth, active in our church and things of that nature. So we saw the full game, right, of what raising and, and developing a whole man uh, right. should be. You know, you know, I, I call it, you know, my five pillars of, of raising sons. You know, so, you know, with that, you know, we first, you know, you got to deal with the, you know, from our perspective, you know, you deal with the arts, I mean, the academics, the arts, the athletics, but you also deal with the development of character, That's right. which is really first, you know, and, and who you develop yourself to be when no one's looking. Which very much oftentimes is about that faith and it's about the church. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then and then from there, you know, uh, service, giving back, mm -hmm. you know, going back and, and giving back to those that did not have your experience. You know, that's the rent that we pay, service for being on this earth. But encapsulating all of that from the top to the bottom, all the way around, is keeping God Christ first, you know, in all your decisions and what you do. So in, in, in taking those five pillars and putting it in the, within the circle of Christ and understanding uh, who he is in your life, you then start to make your decisions, right? Right. right. You know, every decision is made based upon that. Now, 
you can't up the cost, Will. You know, and if you know what the cost is and you still want to do it, then then at least you know. But don't go in something blind. So that's the perspective. Uh, that's the disposition that I take uh, when raising our sons, my wife and I, uh, because that's, you know, my father didn't put it in those words because we're going to talk right. about how right. our parents raised us. It wasn't too much talking going on. <laughs> <laughs> he put it in his hands. He put it in his hands. He transferred it in his hands. You look at that. Not so much hands, but just, uh, you know, just, just that look, you know, the presence. You know, right. when your daddy walked in the room and you know you weren't doing what you're supposed to be doing, just that presence, you know, you knew it was it, it was business time, but but it was all it, it was with love. It was all love. And uh, but again, well, he didn't put it in that that format, but that's how I put it. Right. Well, take this time. I mean, take this time to to you know to celebrate your son, man. I think again, he's fit, he's crossed the first hurdle, graduating out of high school. We know we got much higher expectations. For him. Well, I think it. I think it's Zora Neale Hurston that talked about, you know, Mama uh, teaching us to uh, believe, go for the, go for the 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 sun, you know, shoot for the sun, because at least we would, you know, be able to touch the sky, right? So we know he's he's got higher levels to reach. But I mean, celebrate your son and talk about what he's accomplished and and how you and your wife were able to to yeah. help bring that to fruition. Well, Will, you know, I'm a composite planner. So when I found out that, you know, we were pregnant, you know, I started planning their lives up to the steps up to age 25, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, with that, the, you also have to know who your who your kids are. And, um, you know, you can't push them too much, but you have to make sure that you let them know what the opportunities are. So we're talking about our oldest son. We have two sons. Uh, we're proud of both of them. We're going to talk about the oldest now who's graduated high school. You mentioned graduate high school is a, is a great, great accomplishment. I'm going to look at it from this perspective. I think that graduating high school is a great accomplishment, Absolutely. but it's something that should be expected. Mm -hmm. I think, now I know that there are challenges out there uh, that many people have, but I think that with the right support, it definitely is expected. Yeah, it's right foundations, correct, yeah. Yeah, because you can't move forward without it, so... Not just graduated from high school, but he graduated. Uh, our oldest son graduated from high school uh, with a 4.23 GPA. Excellent. Um, and not only that, but he also had enough credits after his sophomore year to be selected for a prestigious program uh, here at the Governor's School for Science and Technology, which basically means that you have enough credits and you excel in those credits in high school after two years that all you need is English and social studies for the next two years to graduate. And an, and an optional uh, mm -hmm. extracurricular, which bad for him was then. Uh, so he then uh, attended the Governor's School for Science and Technology uh, on the university campus here, uh, and basically was taught by professors. Uh, he went into the computer science strand, which basically he's, he's, he's going to be an engineer. Uh, he's That's been cool. accepted to Howard University. College of Mechanical Engineering on, on a, one of the top scholarships that Howard offers, and he's also received one of the top scholarships for STEM students, African American students, and the money's still coming in. Excellent. He's Excellent. actually received it. We just attended another scholarship uh, 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 program for him as well this uh, on a Sunday, and uh, he's in the six six figures of scholarship money, which is good for mom and daddy. I tell you, that's beautiful. Oh, absolutely, because mom and daddy do not want to see any plus <laughs> plus loans. Oh, at no, all. Listen, listen, <laughs> look, part of the five pillars is also it's, it's for money, you know. So I tell him that you will not. And I, I spoke this to in existence because positive affirmations are very important for all of our lives. I said you will not borrow a dime, not one dime will you or your brother ever have to borrow for things that you want to be in life, go to school, whatever the case may be. So if we will, you and I know better. Yeah. So therefore, our kids should be able to do better. Uh, so we were fortunate on the day he graduated high school to go to his high school graduation uh, with his honors cards, uh, National Honor Society um, yeah. medallion, and graduate there uh, and then go to dinner, and then that evening, go to the governor's school graduation, where he was presented with his second diploma for uh, the governor's school. So he basically has at least uh, over an associate's degree amount of credits 
uh, that he can go and, that he's going into college with, uh, with the six-figure scholarship. And then on top of that, I took a look at it through pictures. And from elementary to middle to high school, mm-hmm. he received the Golden Seal President's Award from the United, United States. Uh, every, every president, from Barack Obama, Donald Trump, to Joe Biden, he's have, he has their signature on oh, his accomplishments. Nice. And then also receiving the National High School uh, Honors Scholars Medallion and uh, Award. So he's full of cords, full of sash stoles, uh, full of medallions, and uh, full of degrees. And uh, it's just a really good feeling, you know, to go off and, you know, to say that, hey, we did it. And not only that, Will, but when I opened up his diploma, Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't almost read the words because he had all these seals of achievement on he has six seals right. yeah. on, his, on his diploma and it was a board of education seal for academic excellence the school board seal of academic excellence the governor seal for academic excellence the civics education seal uh the governor school seal and then national honor society seal and i looked and i said i said son you got all those seals and he immediately he said dad remember in ninth grade we went through the student handbook right. and we looked at and when we talked about the courses I was taking, we looked at the seals that we could get, and he said, "We got them all. We got That's them." Right. That's right. You know, and that was a that was a moment that was truly. Um, I became emotional inside because mm-hmm. he got them all, That's and right. it says that we, you know, we got got to that moment, right? That that it was all worth it. But we know it's the first step, so. As, as as a good but you said a, you 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 but you all set a high bar and Absolutely. he met the challenge man and and, and that's why I actually you know the, to to celebrate it because oftentimes we hear so much about the negative things that are happening the dysfunctional things when you and I know who live in the community we know that there are a lot more young men who are doing well who are doing the right thing and in fact many of them are overcoming challenges you know, in, in their household and coming off and still doing it right there. I wrote about many of these things when I was a journalist, you know, writing for the Daily Press, a columnist writing. And but oftentimes, just like parents would ask me about how I was able to get my sons, you know, successfully out of high school and into college and all that. When let's just be honest, there are still a lot of solidly middle class families like how we raise our children now, yeah. who still face a lot of challenges That's because right. of the, the lures of what you see going on in the community, the peer pressure. There's a lot of kids, man, growing up in, the, whether it's in the suburbs or whether it's in the inner city, in solid communities in the city, who are still having trouble staying on, you know, the right path. Right. How is it that you all were able to help your son Stay focused because, again, he still had a lot of temptations right there in his school. He still had issues going on with drugs, with drug sales. We see in other schools across the country, we've seen gun violence in some solid schools that you would have, or, or, uh, society and all the stereotypes would have said, this kind of shooting, this kind of killing should not happen in this school, in this community. So we know that even in solid families, solid communities, Young people are still having significant severe challenges. How did you all ha- manage to help guide him to to be able to succeed despite all of that? Well, for us, you know, it's it's about involvement. And I, when, when we talk about education, for us, education is a family affair. Mm-hmm. You know, we make everything a family affair. Now, like as you stated, you know, he's he's still he's still a young man. He's a That's good right. Man. And very talented. He plays piano. He plays all three saxophones. Matter of fact, he was also uh, invited and also selected for Howard University's marching band. <clears throat> and he's also on the golf team. He was a co-captain of his golf team. So again, a lot of a lot of you know opportunities to steer, go to the left, as we say, or to get off track. First of all, it's really prayer. Prayer. Mm-hmm. You got to stay rooted and grounded, you know, in the word of God and ensuring and and keep them covered in prayer. That's number one. Secondly, parents, you know, 
I'm, I'm, I am fully engaged. I served on the school board uh, for their parochial schools, both for preschool and, right. and also for the elementary school. I served as, uh, as an officer in their PTA when they were in elementary school. I was a homeroom dad. And I was the dad that had that did not get the big SUV, but I got what I call a swagger wagon. It was a minivan, but I got a swagger wagon. <laughs> Made it cool, right? Nice and, you know, burgundy, sleek design, the whole nine. And I would get all the guys, it was seven of them, and put them in the car and say, hey, let's go to the park, you know, this weekend. Talk to the parent. Hey, let's go here. Let's go there. Um, escort them up to the state capitol, you know, to go, you know, visit when it was time for the, their group with uh, 200 black men, uh, took kids there or any other groups we were partnered with, I would be right. there. You know, right. there was not one place that our kids went in or some places we started to um, peel back a little bit and say, hey, you go on this trip. So, for example, the summer enrichment for uh, development at my alma mater, Southern University Law Center, uh, pastor, there's a pastor here that really has done a phenomenal job funding that mm-hmm. summer institute for almost two decades now. Right. Now uh, he takes kids on a, on a, for about 10 days down to the university. So they go from Virginia, Maryland, all the way to Louisiana, and they stay a week there in class, learning legal principles. They have a mock trial competition. Uh, my son was able to go to the board meeting, speak at the board meeting where we were able to showcase alums, children that are coming back to university and then come back. So that was an opportunity. You're going for 10 days by yourself across country, 24 hour drive. Wow. You, know, you know, look at that and then look and see how he matures, right? But again, being engaged, going uh, going with them to their parent teacher conferences. Every year, I send an email to our te- to their teachers. It's introducing ourselves to them. Right. It's understanding, letting them understand what our expectations are to the teachers and what we've spoken to our kids about. Letting the teachers know what their learning styles are and their interests. And then I always end my emails to all of their teachers with partners in the education of our That's greatest right. asset. That's we right. remain the Clavel family. Partners. That's right. Uh, uh, absolutely. So you were present and involved because we've had issues in our community, okay, with Fathers not being present because of whatever the situation with the mother, but you can not, you can still be involved. You don't have to be present, and then you Absolutely. got fathers who may be present, may be in the household, but they are not as involved as engaged in the whole es- edu- um, educational process and the fact Absolutely. and character building process. And in fact, they could be undermining it. And that's a, and that's another thing that I think. It's real important, again, in knowing about you and your wife, being on the same page in terms of education is crucial for young people. I, you know, when, again, that parent who oftentimes spends the most time with the child, if that parent is, whether it's a male or, or a female, whether it's a mama or the daddy, if that parent is like, look, this is how it's going to go down. You're going to take care of your educational business before you get into the pleasure, all of that. That makes a huge difference. And I remember that in my household, you know, even though my parents divorced, I was 12 years old. My father was no longer present. And I felt the the void of him not being there. He was still very much involved. He still came back, made sure that we, we uh, got together. We did things together. But the thing that both uh, my mother and father were absolutely 100 percent on the same page was the importance <laughs> of education. Absolutely. And you were going to get educated. So there was no a way for me to play one parent against the other. No, that no if, that's if, not if dad said if dad said we got to do this homework, we got to do this. And then mom is saying, well, it's OK. Or mom is actually doing the work for the child and vice versa, because it could happen both ways. That is oftentimes what undermines, you know, the young man's young young woman. In this case, we talk about sons, undermines that development. The other thing that I think is key is, I think all of us come to the planet with something, with a certain Absolutely. tendency, a certain personality trait, a certain bent, 
towards whether it be education or certain gift. That's why college is not necessarily for everyone. Not everyone right. is is a program and really needs college to succeed. Well, 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 for your college, you know, for your right, or for your two years, right. So, so it's so it's really important that as a parent that you recognize what is your child's gift, right, and you nurture that gift. And it sounds a lot of ways that your son came here with a sense of uh, academic achievement and doing well in school. And that respect was already something that was with him. And then you and your wife did a fantastic job up to this point of nurturing that, you know, putting him in the position to succeed. You know, well, that's, that's very interesting. You mentioned that because our oldest son, Our oldest son ended up having got his first B in high school when he started taking AP courses. Mm -hmm. Uh, But he ended up with all A's, um, you know, with that in 10th grade. And he got his first C when he started taking calculus uh, in uh, in, with the college courses at the governor's school. You know, he had made straight A's from elementary, middle school, the whole nine. That was it. You know, and that was a, we're glad that he got his first B. We're glad he got his first C in those two programs, mm-hmm. right? Because for the most part, they are equivalent to an A and also mm-hmm. a college, a college B, right? So, yeah. you know, but again, when you're 16 years old taking calculus one, two, and then 17 taking calculus three, multivariable, multivariable and linear equations, uh, it's, a, you know, he wanted to do that. He pushed right. himself to do it. You know, and it, knowing how far to push your kids is very important because there are many, many parents out there that push your kids to be something greater than they were, or they really put, push them in, to be part of their ambition and not their mm. child's ambition. And they, you, mm. they get a child away. Our other son is not, is not built to be pushed like that, but he's built to be pushed in a different way. Right. Wife recognized that. So he is more you, you just speak softly to him and he'll he'll melt like butter. You know, but if I speak harshly to him and say, you gotta do this, 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 and that, then he'll freeze up, right? But he's a more uh he looks at things more simplistic, but he, he but he can break down those complex things very mm-hmm. easily mm-hmm. if he learns it the way that he wants to learn it. Came in with a different gift. He came, he came, in, came in with a different gift. And I think that's that's what's so important is to be able to recognize that it's not that one way of doing something, one way of learning is superior to another. It's Absolutely. not that one one's bent towards the sciences is superior to to those whose bent may be towards the arts. No, it, it have you came here with different gifts and different skills that that's to be nurtured to its fullest capacity, to its fullest greatness. And I that's think right. that's another thing that's key that you and your wife recognize that, you know, you can't treat all of your children the same. Right. See, see, when we're kids, you said something earlier about, hey, when, you know, hearing about uh, graduating, you were like, what are you, what are you talking about? People celebrating the parent. What kids want everybody to be treated the same. Treat me the same the way you treat my sister or my brother. This way. <laughs> no, it's not about treating you the same. It's about being fair right. and recognizing what your gift is and what your needs are, what motivates you versus what motivates you know your brother, your sister, so on. And I think that's a skill that's very, when parents, like you said, are engaged, and in tune, you can pick up on those nuances and you can help nurture your student, your child yeah. in the direction that they feel naturally that they want to go. As, as opposed to saying, you know, there is no, you know, I'm going to be able to make a living if you want to go into the arts. So you need to study medicine. Um, uh, I, I understand that concern. Because you want your, your child to be successful and be able to, to provide for themselves. But you need to understand where that gift is and, and communicate it in a way that is healthy. That they, for example, they might recognize that they can do both. 
That's right. They can study the arts and they can do something and develop That's a practical right. skill that helps them to support themselves while they're pursuing right. their passion. Well, I mean, you 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 reach a very important conclusion because many times as society, we place certain professions over others and say that's success. Mm-hmm. But as you said, being successful mm-hmm. is not that. Being successful is finding your purpose, mm-hmm. excelling in it and having a passion for it and putting you in the right situation. Right. That's it, you know, because there are some people that can play music and it will soothe the soul. I mean, it, it, it I mean, look, I'm, I'm not a musically inclined person. I love music, but I, I can't play like that. I can't sing like that, but I love people that do. Mm-hmm. And we're all, like you said, all given a gift and you have to nourish that gift and encourage that gift. We also talked about how in Bible study this past week, how you know is you know parents should not provoke their children to wrath. Mm. Now I remember I made a statement to my sons one time. It wasn't a bad statement, but it was just one of those statements where, like, I grew up. You know, look in my house and where I grew up, if you want your your feelings on your shoulders, <laughs> they'll be getting knocked off multiple times a day. <laughs> you know, so like you got to be like a duck. You know, and you know Teflon. You know. Right, t- right, t- right. T- you know, but, <laughs> but so, we mean, get, we so get caught up, don't get caught up in your feelings. Oh, you no, get caught, no, no. Don't get caught up in your feelings up in there. You get, you get really, you get trounced. Get caught Absolutely. Up <laughs> look, you, you couldn't show no weakness there, brother. You had to get it. <laughs> you know, look, it was the dozens, a dozen times a day. <laughs> I, and look, I'm not exaggerating at all, right? <laughs> so, so, but, but with that, you know, I, I said something, but immediately, you know, the Lord convicted my heart and said, you know, go apologize to your son. You shouldn't say that. And I did. You know, I broke down crying and I said, guys, I, I shouldn't have said that. Now, again, me growing up, it was nothing. It was just a regular conversation. But knowing, but to them, it could have right. done major damage to them, right? right? So it's that time period when we talk about raising kids the way, raising sons in this time period, as opposed to when we were raised in that time period. As I said it earlier, you know, my father didn't have to do a lot of talking. You know, we knew, you know, when he met in business, that we knew, you know, my, my father would always make this say, he said, don't let me get a, he, any, anytime we went somewhere, Will, he would say, listen, don't let me get a bad report. <laughs> 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 that was it. We knew if a bad report came back, it was not going to be a good thing whatsoever. So we made sure he never got a bad report. <laughs> you know, you know, in, in, that was it. It wasn't a lot of detailing, breaking things down and the like. But at the same time, you know, we knew that the love was there because my right. father was our PTA president for my little sister. My father was my Cub Scout leader and my brother's Tiger Cub leader. My right. father was there at the school every single time we, we had a performance and so forth. So it was just that example that we now brought and we added, of course, in this day and time, you know, you got to talk a lot more, and it's and back then we should have talked a lot more. Yeah, but that and that's what actually I wanted to ask you about, though. Do you think sometimes that looking at it as such a different era of time, requiring such a different approach, is always a good idea? Because there were certain muscles, mental muscles, emotional muscles that we developed <laughs> with that kind of hard-nosed, old-school approach from our yeah. dads that I think helped give us a certain level of grit and determination Absolutely. Absolutely. that enabled us to be able to deal with some of the the bullets and the and the knives and the spears and things that, that have come at us, not just as, as young men, but have come at us as professionals now. I mean, so, I mean, what do you think about that, that balance? Because I wonder about that sometimes that, you know, with my own sons, that there were areas where I should have been tougher, maybe less explanatory, because uh, let's face it, a lot of times there were things that I really explained in detail that I wish, and the reason why I did it, because I wish that my father had done it for me. Right. And I explained it in that kind of detail, thinking that I was making some kind of breakthrough, some kind of profound, different <laughs> <laughs> 
enlightenment. And quite frankly, <laughs> they just kind of responded like, whatever. You know, I just, it's, it's, you know, I want to do what I want to do now, and that's it. So I wonder about that. I mean, that, yeah. that balance. What you think? Well, well, you, you bring up a very good point. And don't get me wrong. I used some of the hard dolls. Uh, uh, oh, I know you did. <laughs> right. So, you know, they, they, will, they will tell you that, right? And, you know, listen, w- when we mean business, we mean business as well. Now, don't get me wrong. Our sons don't give us disrespect or anything like that. They're very, and one thing that I, I do get anytime I go somewhere, persons will pull me to the side, no matter who they are, no matter what ethnicity or gender, they always compliment how outstanding, how polite our our sons are. And that gives me great joy because it knows that we're doing something right. Uh, so they're very respectful. Now they're still boys. They're still mischievous. They're still, you know, growing, right? But they know there are some places I better not get a bad report. That's not just not going to happen. And, and now they see it for themselves because I said, what you're going to see is when you go off to college, when you see your friends, and they've seen some of their friends go by the wayside, Right. You know, grew up in the same neighborhood for the most part, but different family structure, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, you're going to see what happened to them not happen to you, right? So I always tell them, I said, listen, if you want to do something, I said, always be observant. Take one year and just take a look at what they're doing mm-hmm. and, and look and see the cycle of how it affects them. If you still want to do it, then do it. You know, observation but, is a key to intelligence. Observation. One of my one of my basketball coaches, Gil Reynolds in Brooklyn, he's always used to say that observation is a key to intelligence. Yep. Absolutely, man. And look, you know, when you talk about observation, my uh, youngest son plays basketball, and uh, he was really good in his church league. But then he skipped middle school basketball, went straight to high school JV, hmm. and he had to, you know, he he rode the bench for a while. But the coach said, "I want him to learn the game." at this level, at this speed. I wanted to pick up some things, right? So he did. And what him and some of the parents like, oh, your son's not playing as much, bro. I said, well, you know, he's learning. He's observing. You know, he's mm-hmm. picking the game up. Yeah, and you right. see, and that, that just that one year of observing, getting in the game every now and then, but observing and the culture and how to play and what not to do. Now you see he's added that onto his game and it's skyrocketing. So to your point, Will, you know, it's one of those things where to, to, to where I did give some of the hard-nosed grit, and I mm-hmm. see it in them as well. Right. I said, don't let nobody disrespect you, no matter who you are. I said, do your best, but don't take no stuff from anybody, but handle it in a way that is respectful, uh, that is within policy and <laughs> procedure and legal, you know, uh, but at the same time, Make sure that people know that you are a man and handle your business like a man and so forth. And be able also to talk your feelings out. Yeah, you know? absolutely. You know, being it because a lot of times, Will, as men in the score, especially as black men in this persona of masculinity that that has been thrust up on us, we think that we always got to be, you know, beat somebody up or, you know, we got to handle a disagreement with with our fellow brother uh, with with some type of violence, and we don't. Right. Say, right. hey, look, let's talk it out, guys. You know what I'm saying? L- listen, you know, always be the one to take the high road if need be. A soft answer quells, you know, wrath or a harsh, res- or a harsh response, right? So be use wisdom at the same time. But finally, you know, it's really been a combination, Will, of, you know, how I was raised and how we need to raise our children now and, and communicate with them. And, and, and I will say this, my father and I became more way closer as a young man and a man real early in life because we lost our biological mother, my, wow. my father's wife for 25 years uh, when I was in high school, freshman in high school to cancer. And after that, you know, we would just sit out and talk. I mean, he would talk to me because I was the man and the oldest child in the house. Right. And he would just talk to me, you know, about certain things, you know, especially uh, when he was, uh, you know, praying that the Lord bless him with another wife, our stepmother, who's they've been married over 25 years and done a phenomenal job. Beautiful. Um, you know, and 
because at that time, of course, being an elder in the church, you want to do it the right way, right? And because um, you got other responsibilities, you got other people that are looking at you. So we talked about that. And our life was a charm life. Our life was a blessed life. Mm-hmm. Our life was a, 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 a life that I talk about all the time and that I did my very best to emulate in our home here. My, my right. only, I don't call it regret, but I wish, my only wish is that I would have had more boys. Uh, you know, I want five. Oh, I'd love to hear what your wife had to say about that. <laughs> well, well, well yeah, what she said was, we'll see. And then in the delivery room, because I, I was in the delivery room for both of them, in the delivery room, when the second one came out, she looked over at me like this, while she was on the table, and I knew she didn't have to say another word. That, that was it. The shop was closed. <laughs> but well, as we as we, well as we wrap, I mean, I think about the um, the fathers that are out there. I think about those who are not engaged, you know, with their sons at all. And I think about the young men who are out there who are um, struggling, you know, in a lot of ways because of not having that kind of engagement. Um, with their fathers, what advice do we want to give? I mean, I know for myself, number one thing I always say, the men out there who have sons, who have children, because, you know, I'm a big proponent of, um, you know, I'm a big girl, you know, girl dad and, and proponent, but we're talking about sons today. I would tell these fathers, man, that even if you are not present physically, you can still be engaged and involved and you have to, you owe it to, your son um, that you see that regardless of what your situation is with the mother, um, you owe it to them to be engaged. And if you're not in a situation mentally, you know, there are clearly some situations where there are men who are better off not really being engaged and present because they are so jacked up themselves. Understand that, then make that decision, but, but, if you are able to be involved and engaged in your son's life, whether you be physically there or not, you need to do that. You know, if you're incarcerated, you can still be engaged. You can still be involved. And so, and if you if you have the blessing of being free and being out here and being able to move around, you you owe it to that son because what you're going to do is you're going to produce help produce a, um, a you know a young man who's going to become a man one day and perhaps a father and a husband and all of those things and you're going to be contributing somebody positive you know, to our community. Otherwise, you can also have, by your lack of engagement, the opposite effect. So I would say, men, you, you, you got to stay engaged and be involved if you can. And today is is the best day to start if you haven't been. If you if you breathe and you're alive, you can start. So start today. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I would simply say that, you know, I, I would start with Psalms 127 and 3. You know, it's a very powerful verse. And it says, behold, children are a heritage, mm-hmm. a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. You know, and also as it relates to children, you know, Proverbs tells us that, you know, children are like the arrows in the quiver of a mighty archer. A mighty archer. If you think about that, you think about those those two statements, those two divine div- divine statements. They're heritage. What is a heritage? Mm-hmm. Heritage is something that carries on, that you build up on. It, it becomes a foundation, something that's always looked up on, looked up, looked up to, where others are encouraged, inspired, and, and build um, things afterwards. We've, we've been given that true gift, that true, first of all, the gift of life from the womb, and then, and then also the ability to build a heritage. So children themselves are not just, oh, a headache. Mm-hmm. They're not uh, somebody else's responsibility. They are a part of you. It's the only time that you really get to replicate yourself, you know, in life form. You know, there are many things we could do that are dead, that are not breathing, but something that will carry on your your character traits, your bloodline, right. and right. the like, even even your looks. And then finally, when it says that 
children are like the arrows in the quiver of a mighty archer. When you think about an archer, an archer, it's just not somebody that shoots a bow and arrow. It's somebody that's skilled. Mm. You know, just like... And people, purpose. <laughs> absolutely. People can play <laughs> basketball, but or they're a basketball player, right? <laughs> you know, but he's an archer. He's skilled. So when he takes that, when he takes that arrow, you know, he is now pointing it at purpose, but not just pointing it and, and shooting it any kind of way, but it's measured when he pulls mm-hmm. back on the bow. Mm-hmm. He studies the target and he lets it go at the right time so he can reach the right apex and when it descends and hits his target. Mm-hmm. That means that we have the ability to point our children in the way that they should go. And how far back we pull and where we point them is based upon their purpose that God has given them, their heart's desires, and the passion that we help to uh, instill and create the atmosphere for them to gain. As I speak, you may hear the the just the the love that I have in my voice mm-hmm. from just being a father. I look at them as being a heritage unto the Lord from the Lord, a reward of the womb. And I'm given the ultimate honor and ability. That's right. Responsibility to point them in the direction that they should go so that they can take off and make their mark in this world. If you're not involved in your children's lives, you're missing out on one of the greatest rewards right. that we have as men on this earth. So, Will, I, you know, again, congratulations to you. And like I said, you're 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 at grandfather stage now. So, <laughs> you know, and that's a blessing to be there. That is a blessing to be there. And uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk about our sons and the current accomplishment of our oldest son. And uh, we're in, and as we continue to motivate the two boys, the other thing that we talk about is we don't put them in competition. Their accomplishments are their accomplishments. So the youngest doesn't have to live up to the oldest. He has to live up to himself. Mm. And that's, that's what we put behind them. And uh, we're excited to see what, what, what comes. We're, we know that there's going to be some stumbles along the way, but if they stay on the path, they can get back up and keep moving. And uh, we're excited to see what happens with our with our youngest son as well. So thank you so much for joining us on this segment of LaVisa and Camille. As we talk about raising sons, and as you can hear from the excitement in our voice, you know that we're truly blessed uh, to have sons and children in our lives. If you like what you're hearing, again, continue to follow us on our social media, on our Facebook page. Like, share, follow, and share with your friends as well. And thank you again for your support throughout our season one on Lavisa and Until next time, that's the way we see it, and that's the way it is. Be well.